What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unusual Suspects. I'm your host, Vincent Oshana. Uh, and we have an amazing show with some wild stories. Before we even get there, I want to introduce everybody. We have David Freiheit, Viva Frey in the Casa, one of our favorites. We have Brandon in the house. We got Shane in the house. And we have Rob Gargiulo. And guys, just really fast, and I have to say this. I told Kelly I was going to say it. To all the new subscribers, and to even our old ones, I love you guys to death. Welcome to The Unusual Suspects. Last week, we had how many people live, Kel? Uh, 2,700 of you beautiful people were watching us. I can't express, there's no words to express how much I and we appreciate that you guys are here. The channel is growing, and I love you guys to death. That being said, quick rundown of the stories today. P. Diddy, I mean, if we don't talk about him, people are going to be messaging what the hell's going on with this guy. A lot going on with P. Diddy. Um... Somebody went undercover and recorded all the Masonic uh, rituals. I'm going to get into that. It's pretty wild. Uh, government versus Google and their private, uh, privacy violations. Uh, Canada is doing something weird with a su assisted suicide, which is technically murder, if you think about it. Um, the two-slit theory, Brandon's going to talk about that. I'm not even going to get into that. I know where you guys' minds are going. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know everybody's mind was like, wait, what? Uh, and then the... Uh, Threats, more threats against Donald Trump. But before we get into the stories, um, really quick, I just want to tell everybody, uh, if you haven't downloaded Manect yet, download the app. It's an app that uh, Patrick McDavid, the CEO, came up with where you could connect with Everybody, professionals, you want to talk about spirituality, you want to connect with me, you want to talk about comedy, with writing, with relationships. Kelly's on there. Dave, have you been on there yet? Not You're yet. You're getting on there today. Hmm. Uh, Rob Gargiulo's on there. If you want to know about anything about stories or comedy or production, Shane is on there. He has a psychology freaking major. The guy's smart as shit. I was depressed last week. I talked to him. I made it. Brandon's on there as well. Kelly Arnold, where is she? Look at that cute little rascal. <laughs> anything about production, anything about YouTube, Kelly is the girl. Download that, guys. I'm telling you right now. I even connected somebody last week. You got to get Vivek on Manect. V It'll be Vivek, Vivek on Manect. I mean, that guy. Vivek. Yeah. Vivek. Yeah. That's hilarious. But um, all right, guys. Let's just get right into it. Let's not waste any time. Um, P Diddy. Uh, so uh, uh March 25th, uh, LA and Miami. Uh, his homes were raided by Homeland Security. By the way, it, I can see if it's just the feds or local police department. Homeland Security, <laughs> mind you, they don't give a shit about the border. The border's open, but they have to go after uh, Diddy. So they did a part of a New York investigation following uh, interview with four individual victims. Uh, some were handcuffed outside, including both of his sons. Uh, his private jet was tracked to the Caribbean islands of Antigua, uh, which has no U.S. No extradition. extradition from what I've understood. Brilliant. So it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and then Rob's gonna, Rob has something to say about, the, uh, about his drug dealer, which is coming up soon. But the charges uh, are sex trafficking, sex trafficking of a minor, rape, and other alleged abuses. Um, by the way, uh, dr drugging people. I've heard, and you guys have all seen videos of him, people that have been at the parties, famous people, 50 Cent, Everybody's saying, I've known this as a New Yorker since I was young. The stories from girls that I knew that would be there and be like, it was weird and there were rooms and it's only a matter of time. So I want to know your guys' opinion. David, you've been following this. What do you think is going on? So I've been following it. People said, have you seen what's going on? And I hadn't. And then I sort of caught up on warp speed. I'm not, this is no coming to the defense of P. Diddy. It's waiting until we get more information. There's a number of things that are at play here. Like when you assume that everything the Biden administration does is corrupt, Yes. There has to be an element of corruption to this as well. Yes. I have heard that he was running basically an Epstein Island in his own house, getting blackmail material on people. Yep. There was that video of him where he brought out his daughter's best friend, Ava Baroni, Just and pretended that they had taken her off the street and adopted her, and she looked a little weird. Everyone in that video looked weird. There's grown men standing behind, hey. smiling, all creepy. Dirty, dirty, and I have no doubt dirtiness is going on here. I do suspect there might also be a political angle right now. Maybe something of a public uh, threat to all other hip-hop stars who might come up and support Donald Trump or voice uh, support for him. Shut up, or we're going to come do this to you. Uh, yeah. But there's some, there's, there's some serious stuff. And don't on. forget about, and Rob, I'm going to go to you about what you talk about. Uh, don't forget, like, Clive, is it Clive Davis? Clive Davis, the mogul. All yes, these music people. mogul. Clive Davis, like, both. Well, it's not just artists and stuff, and he is. Dude, he was the Epstein of hip-hop, and he had cameras, and they had legends. Well, what else? Um... The, the girls are saying that he was drugging and raping them, recording it, taking turns raping. Another anonymous woman filed that uh, 
Uh, his house records in Bad Boys Entertainment, they gang raped 17 year old uh, by P. Diddy and the president. Dude, the, the, the amount of allegations, like, you know, when people say there's smoke, there's fire, the fucking <laughs> house is burning down. There's more than just Wait, smoke. Yeah. But if you think about it, a lot of people are saying, uh, People found out, like, because by the way, the, the news is coming out too much. Every week somebody else is coming forward. Mm -hmm. This was, they're saying, these powerful elites, they went in there to grab all the recordings because they're on it. This jet, and that's why I want to get to Rob, this jet, how do you know didn't have every single piece of recording footage and they brought it to a place where there's no U.S. extradition? And Rob, what did you find out about his drug dealer? So his drug dealer is a 24-year-old kid from Ohio um, that I could find information back to 2022. I, it may their relationship may go beyond that, but I mean, how old is P Diddy or Diddy 50 or whatever? Fifty something, fifty-two. Yeah. Maybe? It's just weird that a guy in his fifties has a guy. This the person that was arrested, the 24 year old, is accused of procuring drugs, guns, and paying off sex workers on behalf of P Diddy. It seems weird that Diddy has a friendship or a a, a person that acts on his behalf. That is so young. He's 54 years old. I just looked it up. 54 so, years old. That's So he's hanging out with a guy that's 30 years younger than him, and that guy is the scapegoat to do all of the crime. Well, how, old was he, odd. how old was he when he was hanging out with Justin Bieber, giving him cars? This, David, too old. Because he's 15 years old. You guys could look it up. He's 15, and he's like, oh, dude, openly. I get goosebumps. First of all, the parents, why are you letting your 15-year-old, I don't care if he's a rap mogul, hang out with a grown man that's standing with him. Justin Bieber looks lost. He's, he's with a, a, a star, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, adopting him for a couple weeks, just me and him by himself. And we're, he's going to have the best experience a 15-year-old can ever have. What? Also, what are you did you see that video of the teenager neighbor of his who said, like, he'll his ball will fall into his yard and he won't go after it because he's scared of what goes on there? Yeah. And he Whoa. said there's busloads of people that get dropped off. At Under age. Age. Like, Under yeah. age. We, so we all saw that video. I'm yeah. skeptical of everything on the internet. Do we actually know that that was certifiably his neighbor? I, I thought it could have been, like, it a was troll a car, or a prank. It was a car of somebody that came out next door. It was, it and it was a super fancy car. I noticed it was that. Like, but it like, was like a Maybach. Uh, not a Maybach. It was like a Bentley. But, mm -hmm. Brandon, what yeah. do you think? Well, here's the thing. The fact that DHS was involved makes me think there's some kind of like deep international uh, element to this because you know that's like a that's a terrorist unit you know that was created after 9 11 so the fact that like dhs which handles international terrorism and crimes Great point you know this i think this goes much deeper than just him you know uh, doing this within the rap world i think this could be as far as like a international uh sex smuggling ring or the and it's like, and, and go good did Rob? you mention do you have usher in your notes usher did he have their umberto i well i say say okay. I, I don't have the so usher thing but yesterday an interview came out uh with the howard stern show it's 10 or 12 years old um where it's usher discussing his start in hip-hop and his start in hip-hop was at 13 years old he moved in and lived with Diddy. And he said during that interview that he saw things that he was not old enough to participate in. My question, why is any grown man adopting a 13-year-old kid that's not his, having them live in the house with yeah. them? What, to be your protege? All yeah. of that, like, and I hate to say this, Jerry Sandusky, the guy that got caught at Penn yeah. State, was doing the same thing where he'd bring in impoverished youth. Yeah. He'd say, hey, come work at my football training camp at Penn State, and I'll help you become the next best athlete. Then what would he do? He He'd rape these kids viciously in a shower, and all of Penn State turned a blind eye to it. So for people to be like, "Well, there's smoke, there's fire," but you can't actually accuse. Or, no, we like, could we could accuse. There's yeah. uh, you can at least say, "Hey, enough of this is weird enough to start raising questions about why would you do all?" Of yeah, it? and you see, you saw the Cat Williams clips now are circulating uh, where he yeah. predicted it, and it's sort of like um, the British guy who did the uh, Oscars speech. Like Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Gervais. Gervais. You yeah. make a certain, you know, some truth in jest. In fact, the, the best jokes have an element of truth in them. When he gets out and says in open, what everybody knows is the best kept secret, you know that he's telling the truth. Cat Williams coming out, we can now sort of have an indication that he's telling the truth. I still, I'm, there's going to be you an know, element of corrupt, corruption to it. Yeah. Because in all of this, Hunter Biden, meanwhile, for having done, you know, allegedly similar things and having some concrete evidence of it. Untouchable. Uh, no, no sex trafficking. And, and just, I'm, I'm happy you brought up, Cat Williams uh, said he declined an invitation to one of Denny's parties because gay sex happens to them. He goes, I got to, and I quote, I got to protect my integrity and that virgin hole. I was telling you about, because Diddy be wanting a party and you got to tell him, you got to tell him no. Hey, you know what, so Cat, why Cat, now though? Like what, what's well, the- what, I, lo I love that you said that. It's like- I, and I hate that, Rob. I hate that for all these years, from from the Dan like Schneider to the years. Brian Peck from Nickelodeon, from when is enough going to be enough? From Corey Fame, uh, Corey Heyman, Corey Feldman. Yeah, it's 
the point where we have to, like, even Usher, come forward and get rid of these demons, bro, because they're walking amongst us. And I keep telling people this, bro. I feel like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. Don't stop. Stop being naive. The pu- I'm talking to everybody at home, to whoever's watching, wherever you're listening. I'm a Christian. We have our ways. I go to church. I have my rituals. We have our thing. We pray. I ask for forgiveness. I pray for other people. Don't think for two seconds that the other side doesn't have the same thing. I'm a soldier for God. I'm out here trying to preach the word. I'm not perfect. I fail. I cuss. I do dumb shit. Uh, There I go all the time. But don't think for two seconds that the other side doesn't have its army, doesn't have its rituals, doesn't have its minions. And these people, and the children, these are children in the Bible. I think it's Mark. Chapter 16, verse 8, if I got it right, I can't believe God would be happy. It said, uh, if if you make one of these young ones to sin or harm a child, it's better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the depths of the sea. That's in the Bible. Like, don't mess with children. And these kids, if you watch the Dan Schneider Nickelodeon uh, thing, this guy, Brian Peck, was raping and, and, and molesting and forcefully shoving stuff in this guy's ass. Sorry, this kid. He gets goes to prison comes out and gets a job at Disney. What are we doing? It's well, it's wild. You say like, you know, don't think they don't have their rituals. They religion do. religion is a is a is a basically a chemistry of the brain. And if yeah. you don't have religion and the goodness that religion brings, you're going to substitute that necessity of the brain with something else. It'll yeah. be government, it'll be ideology, yes. it'll be transgender ideology. Yeah. Or it'll be satanic <laughs> rituals that they have, they, uh, undoubtedly. Love the, that you're the, bringing that up. So, uh, but all that to say, I was going to make a joke. You know, Cat Williams. Cool. Meanwhile, yeah. he's going he's to be called a homophobe and a bigot because that's that was his. Uh, I'm not going to any gay party, but I'll go to a heterosexual party. That's not what he was saying at all. What he was saying is degeneracy, left, right, and center. Yep. He didn't partake in it. He was canceled as a result of it. Yep. But they'll find a way to demonize the truth. The truth. Oh, speakers. big time, Brendan. Well, you yeah. said something earlier about well, this. Well, keep in mind though. So I, I don't think it's an accident that all these things have been public for 20 years because. You know, the, like you said, they they have their rituals and whatnot. They have to do it and make it public and make it blatantly clear they're doing it in order to get away with it. Because, it's called a karmic retribution. You told yeah, me about that. Yeah, they have to let you know. They have to foreshadow because. So why he, would he be doing that with Justin Bieber? Like, like basically blatantly saying like what he's doing without saying exactly what he's doing. You know, every anybody who watches that video knows there's sick, twisted stuff going on. But why would he record and release that video with like doing weird stuff with the 15 year old kid? Humiliation. Humil- I, 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 I think and, have- and to show that they can get away with it, it's to yeah. boast of the power that they have. Yeah, they have well, a system to protect them. And it becomes because it becomes too difficult. It, a, it's very dark for people to think about this stuff, right? Thinking about children getting raped and that there's yeah. some type they don't of want to talk about it, pedophilia right. ring. But then it also becomes so when you see these videos and you see them getting away with it, when you see it, it becomes, well, what can I do about that situation? It's too much for me. There's nothing that I can do. It makes people who are watching that not only see that they can get away with it, but then it makes them feel disencouraged to try and make any change because, hey, the system's already been in place. I'm so small. What can one person do to change this? But realistically, all it does take is one person to go and speak up to make that change. And then it takes the rest of the people to get behind that change and go. Yeah. Like, that's what happened with me, too. It was... You know, Me Too was around since 2006. It didn't become popular until Alyssa Milano tweeted it out in 2017. Yeah. And then it became, hey, this is wrong. It happened to me. And it encouraged other people to speak out. And the, the people became the power that made the change. Yeah. And, the, and then the irony is Alyssa Milano then went on to support Joe Biden, who allegedly yeah. showered with his daughter to, uh, you know, sexually, at, inappropriate sexually ages. Ages. at inappropriate ages, allegedly sexually uh, improperly touched Tara Reid. Lisa Bloom, the daughter of Gloria well, Allred, oh. admitted it, knew if it was true at the time. No, they, they, they use it while it's politically convenient and then they ignore it afterwards or they weaponize it for and it, and it drives me crazy and uh uh it drives me crazy when you said and I, and i get it the victims i can only imagine how hard it is to be a victim of an adult male raping and sodomizing and taking advantage i can only imagine because bro look at all the young people if you watch that documentary how it's affected them uh, amanda Bynes and all these people like and if god forbid it's um what's his name uh uh that What's that noise? That thunder? Um, what's his name? Like uh, Justin Bieber. He turned to God and he went off and he started becoming like not weird, yeah. but look at the, the so, toll. Well, Britney so, Spears. I mean, Britney, look Spears Britney Spears. All of them. And and, but, and and the system protects the victimizers, not the victims. That's sorry. Right. Yeah. No. Um. You're just saying Justin Bieber. He. So there's kind of like two worlds in hip hop. It seems there's like the establishment side. Yeah. Diddy's clearly on that. Yeah. And then that also includes Jay-Z and a lot of others who yep. mm-hmm. uh, are, I think, we're going to hear more about soon. Yeah. And then um, and then Kanye, when he broke and started talking about Trump and then he made Jesus his king, Justin Bieber flew out to Wyoming to his compound to record 
Jesus is King with him. Wow. And that's around when Bieber started taking religion very seriously. <laughs> Dude. And um, also, during Kanye's whole uh, divorce with Kim, uh, Diddy was taking pictures with Kim on Halloween and basically like being like, ha-ha, like, I have your woman now. Wow. And uh, Diddy texted Kanye saying, like, give me an address and I'll come fight you right now. Oh, and yeah, I mean, Kanye replied to him calling him a fed. He did call him a fed. Why do you call him a fed? Though? Out of all things, out of all things fed, to call yeah. him a fed. Probably what, working. Like, what year was that? That was 2022. So that's two years ago. Weird. Before yeah. any of the, because I mean, have you guys ever heard of these Diddy rumors prior to today? I know 50 I, Cent has been speaking out, but have you ever heard like certifiable evidence I have, of weird I activity? I have. Being from the East Coast and being, you know, I've okay. heard a lot of stuff. I've heard girls that have been like, "Oh my God, the parties get weird at a certain hour. You can't go up into this room. You can't go." It's uh, I heard another story about. Somebody in an elevator where it stopped and he let his girl get off on the 13th and he went to like the 14th floor because that's the floor where the crazy gay stuff happens, which whatever, you're gay, fine, I don't care. But the moment it gets to children, I'm anti. I was just going to look at the camera and say, stay home, keep your schmeckle in your pants, yeah. get married young, yeah. and don't go out after 10. Nothing good happens yeah. after 10. And guys, wait, moving on to the next story. This is perfect when you said these rituals and satanic and, and, and all that stuff. I... I was on the internet and I saw this thing uh, from uh, Kyle Undercover on X. All right, his real name is Kyle Clifton. He's an independent uh, Catholic journalist. He started posting a series of video clips that he made while he was attending a highly secretive Masonic ritual. Have you guys ever dug into anything mm -hmm. Masonic? Yeah. You guys have any Masonic friends? Or I do. No. Okay. And he told me that if I wanted to be a Mason, all I'd have to say is I'd like to be invited or I'd like to be a Freemason, and they invite you into the meeting. Oh. So for me, I was like, well, how big of a secret society it's is it if I just got to ask? Yeah. And the low levels aren't that secret. The low that's what I was going to get into, but okay. just really quick, Shane. because I've just looked into it, just the history of it, and actually I took a tour of them because they give tours yeah. for free, a lodge in D.C. It's one of the biggest ones there are, um, and uh, it's it was pretty weird. I, mean, pre I, 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 just, I just sent Kelly a video at when you're when yeah, at some point the, yeah. if she can play it. Speaking of showing to the public their Masonic rituals, yeah. I'll play one one on okay. Quebec. But all right, so and then so this guy Kyle Undercover has received countless death threats after publishing the footage. Obviously, no I mean, you talked about that. <laughs> uh, he used a concealed camera. It was his iPhone and his shirt, and he documented the induction ceremony of a third degree master. Uh, Mason ceremony, which is the highest degree of Freemasonry in the Blue Lodge before members can choose to deepen uh, their membership through the more specific routes, such as the Scottish Rite. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> so he was asked why he went on this exposing uh, mission, and he said he was researching some of the crazy stuff that seems to be controlling the world. He said he was looking into Judaism and Freemasonry and all the occult groups, and he goes, he did some research and found out that there was a lodge down the street from his house so he called, Rob, like you said, and he said he was interested in joining. He then befriended the people uh, at the lodge, and for two years, he had to hang out with them, go to dinners, hang out every week. They finally voted him in, and then after five years, uh, he, he wasn't ready early on. After five years, he recorded it and exposed them. He, was, he went through so much negative crap, guys, that he had to go to church to become baptized. That's how fearful we, we was for this demonic stuff. And after going, yeah, he got baptized, so... Wow. He says, and I'm going to show the first clip here in a second. This is a five-year investment five year to get this undercover. Well, seven, because it was five years that he was in, seven. but two years of going to dinner with them beforehand, yeah. too. Wow. wow. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so he says that they often refer to the supreme architect. They never say Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the lower levels, like you said, Brandon, of masonry, they never tell you who the supreme architect is. But the higher you go, the, you unlock the secrets, you find out that it's Satan. Baphomet. This is his words, not mine. He said that they have upside down stars. They have the Jewish star on the walls, and you guys will see them. Wow. Uh, we're going to say Shank. I was going to say real quick at the top floor of the lodge that I was given a tour of, they had on the table all the holy books parallel to each other. And it was almost saying like all religions are equal to each other. And there's yeah. like, so there's this thing called perennialism, which is like there's one true religion and all the religions participate in it. And Christianity isn't really significant or special. Yeah, well, and, and so that's the low level thing. But basically it's already telling you that we're not Christian. Oh, yeah. You know that. And when they write Christian. God, when they mm -hmm. write God, it's G hyphen D. They don't even write God. Wow. He, he stated that there are blood rituals where you have to drink blood out of a human skull to get to the 33 level. This is, by the way, this what all... Kind, what kind of blood? I, I'm assuming Probably human. Christian. <laughs> yeah, probably Christian. Uh, <laughs> so Rabbi. the structure... So Kelly, can you pull up the chart, my love? So this is the structure is the first... 
second and degrees of masonry, which you can achieve in about two years. And then the third to the 32nd, they take you on a weekend retreat. They knock down all the degree work and you get to there. Now, then after the 32nd, to get to the 33 level, you have to have a life-changing event. And the life-changing event is uh, is at the per some of the people's discretion. Some people donate a lot of money uh, or convince a lot of people to join masonry. And some people say that there's murder and sometimes rape. In a nutshell, he said, Freemasonry mocks Christianity uh, with all their symbols that are mocking God, they're mocking Jesus, and they're mocking the Holy Trinity. It's basically practicing sat Satanism in a ritualistic sense. They have deacons at the lodge. And you guys know what the leader at the at these lodges is called? What? Worshipful Dude. master. Oh my who do you who are you worshiping? <laughs> so this I'm gonna get ready. Here's here's some of the clips from his Kyle undercover. This is um uh, to enter the third level of masonry, the initiate is blindfolded, has no idea what's going on, and this is the mock execution ritual where he plays the role of Haram Abif, who was the original Freemason. Watch this and tell me what you guys think. Like, look, look, look at the guy. Can we put the volume up? Okay. Give me the secrets of a master mason, or I will take your life. This is no time or place for the man no secrets. Talk to, not, not to me about time, place, patience, or the completion of the temple. Hell look, wants to do Dude, this. look, look. master mason, or I will take so your what? life. So they're playing. You know, you in this room they want the master mason. Just hurry up a biff. He, he's playing. The guy's playing the role. You'll then receive them lawfully as I am. You don't pass Jubal and Jubalo. Me, you cannot pass. My name is Jubalo. Well known for my determination of character. What I undertake, that I do. Give me the secrets of a master mason secrets, yeah. instantly, for I will take your life. I will not. What? Still persist? Then die. Look, mock. They kill him. Boom. Dude, this is mocking the execution of the guy. Then they bring him to the right. Kelly, you can stop it, my love. So now, guys, I got goosebumps. The how? What the? What is going Psychos. on? Psychos. So, Brandon, they mock the burial, Brandon. They bring the guy to the side. Buddy, he's blindfolded. He has no idea what's going on. This type of stuff isn't out on the internet. This is one of the first guys that did it. So they, they throw sandbags on him. Then they shovel dirt to make him think that he's actually getting uh, buried. <laughs> and now, guys, this is crazy. By the way, before we go, run a poll in the chat right now, Kelly. Do you guys believe that this is just guys that are just trying to hang out or this is actual satanic rituals? I want to know in the chat. You got you to put a third option, a little bit of A and a little bit of B. This looks like LARPing uh, of the most <laughs> yes. bizarre order. Like, I, I've seen the people dress up like medieval people and battle each yeah. other in fields. And it's this a little is, weird, but it's exercise. But this is what the hell was yeah, that? We, okay, I'm not even done. <laughs> so the second video Kelly's going to show is the Masonic Resurrection and Secret Handshakes. Go ahead, Kelly, play it. So the guy's like technically buried. Who's the guy in the red? In the so red the rest, suit? King Solomon. <laughs> King Solomon. They're, they're, it's a yeah. Oh my god. So look at the handshake. Boom, boom, boom. Three this. Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. They're not talking about our oh, God. Lord Are there women god. here? Or no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. male we'll only. That. No broads allowed. Yeah. They, they have a different <laughs> sex for women. You will okay. raise the body by the grip of an enterprise face. Dude, by the way, this this is insane that they like. This was on X. This oh, I see the Jewish star in the background. Oh, yeah. See, well, it is a star. King Solomon. That is King Solomon. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, see this hand? Like, guys, so see just these a handshakes? Thumb war. They're just having a thumb war. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, it's certain handshakes so you know somebody's a mason or not. The way they grab your hand, oh, the way they do that in fraternity. You have a fraternity handshake. Yeah, yeah this yeah, seems yeah. like a very bizarre fraternity. No, no, but yeah, ve yeah, guys, very, very weird. Oh, the video says, the text says, uh, expose a Freemason Kabbalah oh, ritual. Kabbalah or Kabbalah is a Jew. Kabbalah. Kabbalah. Yeah, Kabbalah but, yeah, but. She's the second coming. No, but yeah. <laughs> Kabbalah is the Jewish mysticism practice. Okay. It's, it's about becoming one with God. Oh, yeah. But, okay, now, now pause this, Kel. So, by the way, wow. so there's a bunch back. of different handshakes that oh my god oh my god like there's certain stances that they're saying like a lot of judges a lot of people that are in this uh mason uh, in the freemasons if you go to court and the certain way that you stand with your hands dude the judge oh. recognizes bum that's serious recognizes that you are one of them and they give you leniency <laughs> and he goes well dude i'm telling you right now it's a secret society in my ass and then he goes um notice how a lot of the the masonic temples are next to police stations and courthouses but wait 
This is all stuff that he said. Now, the last video, this is the third one, and I'm going to have Kelly show the beginning, and then I'll fast forward, is the oath and penalties of a Freemason. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll get into dialogue when we show it. Go ahead, Kel. Dude, look at this. He's almost... By this is why I don't leave the house. Yeah, don't ever leave the house. <laughs> Watch. Who comes here? Who comes Watch, here? Watch, brother. Who has been regularly initiated and entered apprentice Mason. Passing the degree of fellow craft. Now seek for a life of masonry by being raised to the supply degree as to Mason. And these guys, these guys' he's, wives he's are like, he's out really probably really cheating. Work. No, yeah. bitch. He's with <laughs> butt naked. It's dude. worse. Right, right, now, look, now, guys, <laughs> now, guys, ready for this? That's, that's a Masonic Bible. That's not our Bible. That's... Their Bible, and now they're telling him all the penalties if he tells the secrets. This is like a bad version of Eyes Wide Shut. Hundred percent. Or the prequel to Harry Potter. Yeah. Now, yo, Kelly, go to three minutes and twenty seconds, my love. Yeah, Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this now is. go to three twenty, and then let this play. Dude, watch this. Watch. Dude, he has to kiss this thing. Is that Kyle? No, Kyle's recording. No, no, he's recording. Yeah. Oh, they're great footage, bro. He's like on yeah. some James O'Keefe shit. Look, he has to kiss the, their Bible. Dude. Blindfold. Another senior word. Blind. Release the candidate from the paper. Release the candidate from the... Now he's... Candidate. Look at what? I think it's taking his clothes off. His naked body to signify the bond of the fraternity of three... Bro, they basically told him, if you turn on us, we're going to kill you. That's basically it. Blindfold's like symbol of like. And you got Mr. White. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, Kelly, this you can stop this one. And now, guys, because I want to be able to show all of them, the last clip is a spiritual adoption the Masons do with children. He was on a podcast on the uh, on this guy named Lorenzo's podcast, Junior. Guys, I'll let Kyle explain what they do. Listen. Spiritual adoption that Freemasons essentially get to bring these children in. The way that they look at it is it's a child bride. So the child wears a veil, dresses up in sometimes a wedding gown, and uh, usually it's for the boys, but there are instances where they bring girls in also. Um, and each Freemason is assigned their own child where they walk down the uh, to the altar and they do this little ritual with them, and it's essentially they're married spiritually. It's very what? creepy stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it's for Dude, the higher look, degrees. Look. Uh, this isn't like a requirement. They say they want to help the children. A lot of times these children are uh, foster children. That's kind of the scary part to me is they're bringing in these already damaged children and they're introducing them to Freemasonry and they're spiritually marrying them. I mean, if that doesn't sound like pedophilia, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> that is, man. That's exactly what? what it is. That's crazy. That's sad. So they're going and they're adopting these kids, bringing them in just to spiritually marry them and like kind of like train them up and groom them up to become Freemasons later. What? Exactly. So this is called the Daughters of Job. So that's where this part kind of caught me off guard when I heard about this. They essentially bring these children in. This is a, a Freemasonry for girls. You have to be, I think, between the ages of 9 and 17. But the mm -hmm. Freemason ritual for little girls is essentially bondage rope. If you notice, they have these rope tied around their body. They teach them how to tie the ropes. They tie it around their breasts. They tie it around their waist. And it's it's essentially just bondage rope, Japanese bondage rope. That's crazy, man. Okay, you can stop. All right, so, guys, and I want to ask all you guys before, uh, like, you see something like this. The guy, I mean, dude, he should be fearing for his life. I know he's had a bunch of- Was that of a mustache? Was that a real mustache? That's a real mustache. He... I mean, okay. but if you notice, do you see his, dude, he said after he did this, he had to go to church, get baptized, because he kept feeling like this spiritual battle that he was going through. Because, bro, you're worshiping, you're not worshiping Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The God that they're talking about isn't the God that we're all talking about. You see something like that, David. Like, besides the, okay, fraternity part of it, which I know Masons very well. I know a couple- what do you, what, you see something like that? That's, that's it, just a, uh, uh, hey, we're getting away from our wives. It's very bizarre. Um, I can imagine the steel man argument on their side is going to be we're teaching uh, principles and morale, whatever. I don't know what they're teaching. I'm curious to know whether or not, yeah. well, not he saw any outright illegality, uh, outright terrible things. But, Kelly, if you can play the video that um, I flipped you by tweet. What is it? It's, okay, so the pretext, I saw this video. It's Francois Legault, who's the premier of Quebec. Okay. Getting in front of a crowd, I forget, we're getting ready to do a press conference. He gets up and he does the outright, I don't even want to do it, this. What's, like, it's so... Is it the... Because do they do no, a no, bunch he does, of... No, no, he does it on by his, by his, by his foot. Um, are we going to be able to play it? By, by, it's by his foot? Yes. Uh, well, it, it, by his, he stands up, stops, and does this gesture, like, like as, he, as he stands. And it was so awkward, like, this has to be a, a deep fake. So, bottom line... These rituals, I mean, I, you know that they exist. You know that people are part of bizarre societies. Um, 
uh, this is why I, uh, you I know, I, I tell my kids, you think we're weird. I am the most normal person on earth compared to what is actually out there. Oh and God. that's a horrible thing for people to have to appreciate. Well, so, Vin, think about it like this. So, um, the government, the government kind of gets freaked out whenever groups get together. Like, think about what happened in Ruby Ridge. It was just like a family with some guns out in the woods, and the FBI swarmed them and shot them all down in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have groups like the Freemasons or these, you know, pedophile ranks just get away with it. Not only get away with it, the uh, government defends them, the media defends them. So, and even the um, Scientology. So, like, what kind of deep, entrenched, uh, systematic power connections do they have? So, like, we're not only are they allowed to exist, but they're like enabled by the police and judges and courts and media. To exist, and so. it's weird Brent, that, they're, that they're all connected. In the fact that, like, but bro, one of the most prominent sex trafficking, uh, Epstein, uh, dude, think about it. They had they killed the guy, that's why the whole Diddy thing. It's like, bro, what they they're all protected, but once it's like p too many people start coming forward, something has to happen to them. And uh, so, like, they, like, this, no, is, this is this is this is it. Bro, Brent, this. I'm gonna come back to you, yeah. and you tell me if this looks weird. All to right, you. go ahead. This is the uh, premier of Quebec. Look at his hand. Boom. Like, like what the hell is that? What is he? He's doing the sign. So like yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> if you, every, if, well, anyway, if that's it. It's, it's, it's just, it's bizarre beyond words, but it's a public assertion. I am a member of something, and well, I, mean, I thought it was fake, but well, it was real. And Shaquille O'Neal has opened, he had a Masonic ring on once. I forgot where he was. He's like, yeah, what, 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 what ring is that? And even Shaq goes, well, I'm a Mason. So Shaq has gone through the thing that you just saw. And they're out there, bro. And it's a society. It's not as secret. I've heard some crazy stuff. Like from what we saw, I heard something wild back in the day. I mean, this kind of not validates it, but it wouldn't put it past. These are the ones that you said, Brandon, that are kind of low key on the surface. Yay, I'm, we're in the, the Mason. I heard one where they do that Bible thing where they put the Bible. This is allegedly what I heard. They put the Bible in front of you and they tell the person, spit on it. Okay, the person that says no, they pat him on the back and they say, "Hey, <laughs> good job, Brandon." Okay. Yeah, they say, "Good job, you didn't do it." Listen, you're in. You're gonna be Mason. The guy that goes, they can give him all the secrets and trust him with everything. You know why? Because he doesn't have no. He doesn't give a shit. That guy you trust. You know, the guy that's like, "No, I'm a Christian." You bring him in to let the public know. Okay, we have a good. Great, we're good people. This guy goes to regular church and blah, 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 blah. But the guy that spits on the Bible, you, he'll, he'll die for your ass, and you can trust him with anything. We did something similar. I was in a fraternity, Brandon. I know you were in a fraternity yeah. as well. We did something similar where we had all the guys line up, and then we would say to the pledges, all right, now grab the guy to your right's penis. And whoever actually went to go grab, he's the go, one. Gay, gay. <laughs> but, like, we were 19, and we were in college, and the reason we joined a fraternity was to get drunk and meet chicks. And <laughs> I have a <laughs> what are you doing as a 50-year-old man dressing up in, in robes hey, and doing this? Me off. If I was trying to pledge, and I, because I'm trying to win. If I got the guy, I'm like, what, I'm not in? I thought, I, I thought this meant I was in. Jesus, Rob. Anyway, but uh, okay, guys. And that being said, you know, decide for yourself. I just think it's very, very weird. But you said, stay home. Get, I, I went to university. I didn't want to join a frat, and I didn't. Yeah. For these very reasons, I joined the Law Student Society or the Law <laughs> Student Association. Yeah. Uh, it's some weird crap, and I understand people have some fun doing it. This but, is yeah. this is next level weirdness. And we could cut into my time for a second on this. Yeah. I would like to address this. Part of the like, okay, I do think fraternities are weird. I, I do, but I also think there's a part where you're coming up in college, and it's I need to identify with a group of people, and I think that that is inherent in human nature is that you people look for crowds to flock to. Yeah, like right. So you went to. Yeah, you yeah. went to the legal well, I, thing. And we, I played squash. That was my that was my group. So, so and Canadian of you squash. <laughs> so there is this weird part where it becomes like this is normal for guys to want to get together and spend time and find a group of men yeah. that you share the same ideas. The problem is those ideas are freaking crazy. <laughs> They're like, why are you so, Yeah, and Bible. Okay, like I, the fact that you have your own Bible. Anyway, all right, moving okay. on. Rob, uh, government versus Google, their privacy violation. Talk to us. Well, the government's actually working with Google, so we um, can. Yeah, it's it's actually the government and Google double teaming the American citizen. Mm, uh, this actually starts in Canada, and since you're here, Viva Fry, I'd like to talk to you about the Online Harms Act, which is a piece of legislation proposed by a Canadian Prime Minister. Your pre well, I guess Mo your I call him President. modern day Hitler at this point. 
modern done, day. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, stopped yeah. weighing nice. my words. Yeah, it hasn't. It's past first reading. It's not law yet, but uh, we'll we'll get into it. Okay, so this is my very very dumbed down version of it. I'm hoping you. Can I help love me those versions. Assist. Uh, the law is proposed uh, to help enhance social media platform safety for the youth. Yeah. However, criticism is that it's uh, far reaching and Orwellian. Uh, the law proposes life imprisonment for online advocacy of genocide, up to five years in jail and uh, increasing the maximum prison term for promoting hatred from two years to five years. But what is really, really concerning to me and what stood out is that the law permits provincial, how do you, pro provincial, provincial, provincial do judges to impose house arrest and fines if there are reasonable grounds to believe that a defendant might, might <laughs> wait, commit wait, wait, a crime. Wait, wait. Might? Might. Not you've thought about it, but you haven't done it, but that's enough for us to lock you in your what house. Movie so based that? On your, what movie was that? Minority Report. Minority Report. It's, it's bad beyond words. You, you might have missed the most <laughs> important job. and the most ludicrous part of this law or proposed bill. It attempts to define hatred. And the definition, I, I can't remember it offhand, is so ludicrous. It's scorn and scorn and another term, but not, um, but beyond ordinary disdain. It, it's... That's the one element that's ridiculous. The Online Harm Act, yeah, it purports to protect the children, as if we don't have child pornography laws, and they're very strong in Canada, as if we don't already have laws to force disclosure of criminal activity, whatever. We already have all the existing legislation for it. This piece of legislation is nothing other than Orwellian. It seeks to amend the Charter of Human Rights, to add hatred as a definition, to enhance sentences to basically turn the human rights tribunals into political jackpots file an anonymous complaint or file a complaint you can get paid by the government you can get paid by the person who made a hateful tweet it's retroactive in nature because if you have access to a tweet that remains online and this law comes into power and someone retweets a tweet that you could have deleted then that can constitute an offense so it's basically retroactive criminal law oh my it's God. a joke it's a joke life in prison potential for promoting or advocating genocide and I made the joke when I covered this, like, all right, what does promoting mean? What does advocating mean? And what does genocide mean? Because you might have a bunch of people saying from the river to the sea who might now face life in prison if Ugh. the government determines that to be promoting or advocating genocide. Wow, that's a great point. And, and mind you, some of these people are, are ignorant and they just, have no, they have they no just repeat the rhetoric. No. To they, the river to the sea. Oh, my God. Absolutely. And, and misgendering oh has been deemed to be genocide hate. against trans yeah. people. It, it's The law is... A joke. It's a tyrannical government. We'll get into the the, the yeah, yeah. why I call him now the modern day Hitler, but yeah. uh, it's a it's a joke. Sorry. So please. No, and it's it's Go funny. On. <laughs> it's funny that think about it. They're doing that with the LGBT community in Russia. Putin just made the LGBT community a terrorist. <laughs> like, <laughs> did he really? Oh, he did yeah. something. Rob, please look it up. It's like such a it's different a gender but, ideology. It's I a think. gender yeah. ideology. Yeah, please look it up and please, please fact check me. But but you nailed it, David. It's like the, these are little. These are lines that they're drawing in the sand where you're like, wait a minute, what did I? It's almost like in in, uh, in China now, if you're with somebody that's cre uh, does a crime or like doesn't pay their their cashless thing, you get in trouble too. So they're it, attaching everybody to with this. the social credit score, right? Social like credit score. If you're with somebody that consumes too much meat, the concern is that you may then purchase them the meat what? for them to consume, so they shut your credit card off as well. It's very Orwellian. It's scary. It's happening. And that's what gets baked into the predicting your crimes. Like, so they look at your data, they look at the people you hang out with, and that all goes into an algorithm that determines whether or not they think that you're high risk to commit a crime in the future, bro. So it's I like your data. Is um, potentially ratting you out. I, that's why I'm telling, and it's happening everywhere else. That's why I'm telling you guys right now. We always talk about this. Thank God, our freaking founding fathers were like, "Wait a minute, this power. We better let them say what they want. We better give them guns because yep. this shit's gonna get crazy." What'd you find out about Vladimir Putin signs law banning gender changes in Russia? Okay, legislation <laughs> outlaws medical interventions aimed at changing the sex of a person and altering gender. Uh, so it, that's very interesting. That that's their approach where our approach is sure you can hang that flag in your classroom instead of the american flag why be prideful about living in the greatest country in the entire world what you should be proud about is that a man who identifies as a lady can urinate in a women's restroom at a planet fitness oh, and not get and, and not to cut you off this is this is a reuters russia adds lgbt movement to list of extremists and terrorist organizations yeah. that's reuters Holy shit! Go you got you to read the details on that. But uh, no, we've 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 entered the realm of a universe where the same countries that ban or condemn uh, female genital mutilation, yeah, 
are now promoting gender-affirming care, which, as far as I'm concerned, in minors is nothing more than minor genital mutilation. It is. And, and, and that's the liberating part. And if you dare talk about that or criticize that or try to outlaw that, you're the demon. In Canada, they the, with the Conservative Party, which is why I say they're sort of like liberals at the speed limit to borrow from malice, yeah. they passed the um, conversion therapy ban which is a law that says you can't try to talk a trans or a gay kid out of being gay or out of being trans, but you sure as hell can talk them into it. So it's a one-way conversion, Ben. And Jordan Peterson was sounding the alarm on this too. It basically criminalizes, and in fact, does effectively criminalize psychiatry, psychology. Instead of treating patients, you have to affirm what was, up until recently, you know, mental illnesses on a scale without judgment. Gender dysphoria was a diagnosable mental illness, and now instead of treating it, all all professionals are able to do is affirm it under penalty of law. This is how society's fall. Wow. Don't think of why it's a mass sterilization effort. You know, they want to slow the population growth. What better way to do it than to only be able to talk kids into cutting off their junk rather yeah. than talking them out of it? Yeah. On Prom top of all that other po poison that they put in us, promote abortion, on. Uh, promote promote sterilization, abortion. and then say population's not growing. We gotta double the p Canadian population by mass immigration. Yeah, and, and, and then. <laughs> Don't yeah. forget about that that experimental drug that they're like put number five in you. Yeah. I don't even want to say the word because you know they'll take the and the, arresting parents for not letting their kids get a gender change. You know and, that's that's oh, going yeah. on and states. in Quebec they passed a law that amended the Youth Protection Act to remove parental supremacy as the overarching principle of the Youth Protection Act, and now it's a government administrative body that gets to decide what's in the best interest of the kid. <laughs> it's Dude. crazy because schools are in the United States are. Go, uh, going and of uh, going around the parents to affirm the gender of children who are questioning their gender ideology. But if my son is two minutes tardy to a class, I get an email and a text <laughs> message saying your son was late today. But if my son goes in and goes, guys, I'm going to chop my dick off to be a lady, <laughs> I'm not going to get a text or an email. <laughs> like, I think that's what I need to be notified yeah, about. Yeah, that's a great no, point. Yeah, no, he was late, <laughs> Rob. Fantastic point. And by the way, just real fast before we keep going forward, I want to give a shout out to Dave's pink scrunchie Kelly, you know, pointed out to me, look how sexy that is. Look, look, look at that. Like, that's a man that's comfortable in oh, sexuality. And, and, and 30 years ago, they'd be telling me, Dave, are you sure you're a man? Like, yeah. Man, have you thought about <laughs> Are those changing? your kids, David? You're no, like, it's, yeah. it's wild. You're speaking of, you know, like the double standard. Leah Thomas, a biological male with a, with a wang, hanging out in the women's <laughs> locker room, <laughs> winning races. That's fine. <laughs> But then that guy who crosses over the lane to celebrate after he, you know, makes a personal best gets disqualified. The, the, it, it is intended to demoralize so that the population is easier to dominate. That's that's my firm belief. Well, and with the Leah the Thomas thing, I had no idea. Look, I was I, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's it sucks and yeah. whatever. I didn't realize that they both tied and had the exact same time. To the, to the and so when you second. look at it and you go, like, I legitimately thought, okay, they let her race and she beat Riley Gaines. Well, she deserves the first heat, whatever. It does the person that beat Riley Gaines he, deserves. It's a, I, I, I know, but I'm trying to be because there are people. I do believe that there are people that feel that they've been born a different gender. So I'm okay with people making that decision at an age appropriate time in life. Yes. If I let my 14 year old eat anything he wanted to eat every day, he would eat Sour Patch Kids all day, every day. Yes. He'd have diabetes and be 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. But if he goes into school and goes, guys, I feel like a woman, and I need you to help me chop my dangalang off so I can be a girl. Hmm. The school will help him. Well, so there's this weird thing for me where I'm like, I am pro LGBTQ rights. I I would like to think I'm an ally. I want everybody to live their true, authentic yeah. self. At the same time, when those LGBTQIA plus, plus rights yeah. start to invade on my own personal liberties and that of my children, I go, that's where I have a problem. But then you start to push back, and it's you hate trans people. You're gonna end up in this online harms act by Canada, and now well, I'm in the gulag. Yeah, right? but here's the crazy thing, though. So literally 20 years ago not one state in the U.S. allowed gay marriage and just in this short amount of time we've gotten here in 20 years. So I'm, I agree. I, I don't think it was right to prohibit gay marriage because, you know, whatever do you want yeah. to do. But how do we get here in such a short amount of time? To, and and Brandon, no, to Brandon, great point. I mind you, we know, me and Kelly, I'm pretty sure you guys know, yeah. I have very close friends that are gay. They don't like this yeah. It's going ridiculous. They have fought. They have done. Think about the 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 plight of 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 the gay community to get all the shit that they went through to get to where they are now to have this shit happening. Well, they they're not happy with. And it. most important, faced with the fear mongering, if you give them an inch, they take them out. That was the argument for yes. prohibiting gay marriage. Yeah. Now, yeah. Gay marriage is totally different because it's between two consenting adults and it impacts nobody else except for the religious conf Whatever. conflict. Yeah, but that's different. Having a man compete in women's sports because he identifies as a woman infringes on the rights of the woman and. 
it's the end of the story. It's not a question of saying you don't have the right to be transgender or whatever. Do what you want to do. Blair White comes out and says, I, you know, I, I refer to her as a she because I, I thought she was a woman before I knew the story. Buck Angel on Twitter <laughs> referred to him as a him because I, I thought yeah. he was a man before I knew. But they still say, call me transsexual because I'm not about imposing my ideology on more vulnerable groups. That's what Leah Thomas is doing. He's not a transgender activist. He's a misogynist who is taking advantage of his biological advantage to be a better swimmer in the women's category yep. than he ever was in the men's. And so. with that, what turned me on to that conversation was finding out that he didn't win. He, he tied didn't. Riley Gaines. He and tied. yet there was a movement through the NCAA to award the man in that situation, even though they had the same And time. they wouldn't give her the trophy. Yeah. She had to let him take the trophy and because that, that was their that was their virtue signal. But that for me was, oh, there is clearly some type of forces behind the scenes that we're not uh, aware of that are making these pushes to make this scene normalized. And that's what bothers me. But let me go back to this Canadian bill for a second. Um, and, and I'd like your input on this. How are they going to classify if this bill is passed? Let's remove the hatred. That's obviously a huge part of this bill. It's life imprisonment. Outside of defining hatred, how are they going to determine if you think of doing something but don't do it and then penalize you for that? Have they been clear about that at all there, in this legislation? There's nothing clear about the legislation. And just to clarify, <laughs> okay, nothing great. clear about it. Just to clarify, <laughs> the, the life in prison was only for promoting or advocating genocide. And then the hate crime aspect uh, has enhancements on laws. Nothing about this is thought out. It, even left wing uh, law professors, there's a guy, Michael Geist. He's, a, he's I call him left wing. He's, an, I think, a University of Ottawa professor. It's like, this is beyond the pale the a you know we have laws that already exist for this but uh this is beyond the pale anyhow it goes far beyond its scope of protecting children online when you start amending the human rights act and turning tribunals these administrative tribunals commie tribunals into basically like political jackpots so consider this like they're calling the what um israel's doing to uh gaza right now a genocide so what if somebody online saying oh you know i think israel has a point in what they're saying does that is that life in prison for yeah, advocating I, for genocide well no that's who, a great who, point. but even more important than that the the nato definition of genocide which is very very broad as far as i'm too broad it says partial li you know linguistic uh, suppression of part or all of a society in quebec yeah. some people say you know it should be a french only province is that is that genocide <laughs> yeah. and i know is anyone who says you know vive le quebec libre uh, independent uh, quebec as a country is that genocide you're getting awful close like you don't know what pandora's box you're opening yeah. but this is intended to be arbitrary capricious and willy-nilly politically applied to politically disfavored groups and the period. reason that i brought this up uh this story specifically was because i feel like this is the start of what we're currently going through in the United States. Uh, Kelly, if you could show the Forbes article from March 22nd, feds order Google to unmask certain YouTube users. Critics say it's terrifying. Federal investigators have ordered Google to provide information on viewers of select YouTube videos. According to court orders obtained by Forbes, the government sought details on viewers of specific videos, including those viewers' names, addresses, telephone numbers, and their user activity. In one instance from Kentucky, uh, undercover agents targeted a YouTube user with the online moniker Elon Musk WHM, uh, who was suspected of illegal activities related to Bitcoin transactions. The government then requested data from Google on all users who accessed the relevant YouTube videos, which collectively garnered 30,000 views. So the government is going and asking Google to provide 30,000 usernames, email addresses, telephone numbers, home addresses, and their user activities because you watched something on YouTube that they deemed may be illegal. They were caught, Rob? This is already... Uh, it's it's, uh, it, uh, yes, the the, the government was caught. The people that were looked up, they don't say what happened to these people well, other than you probably end up on some watch list. Has anything cha has anything changed? Like, the, So they, they put them out on blast. What what change? Is it still happening? It I mean, it's obviously going to keep going. It does. I mean, I would think that if this is just the start of it and Google, watch, obviously I, Google complied because they handed over the 30,000 crazy. I watch crazy shit on there all the time. But by imagine, the way. okay, you, so you watch something and all of a sudden, all legal, by the way, what Vinny watches. Yeah. It's yeah, so all on YouTube. 41, I watch crazy stuff. So a report came out last week from Media Research Center. We wrote this up on VT.com. Google has interviewed in U.S. elections 41 times since what? 2008. That's recorded Holy times. Holy shit. And uh, there was there was also a report from November from Jim Jordan, uh, 70 pages from one of the House committees documenting explicit times where Google was told by the government consortium of DHS and academic think tanks, Stanford, Stanford Internet Observatory among them, uh, 
who to delete tweets from during the 2020 election. They had uh, Dennis Prager, Newt Gingrich, Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk, uh, Tucker Carlson. R- RFK, I think. Uh, yeah, RFK, Mike Huckabee. So one Democrat. So it's like... Or, but but only because he's, uh, he's now politically disfavored yeah. well, because yeah. he's anti, anti-vaccine. anti For them, he's non-Democrat. He's turned so... Hmm. And so, like, where is the distinction between Google and the governments at a certain point? I None. mean, they're like zero. There's if it's Jeez. at the point now where Google is doing the work for the intelligence community, you have to begin treating Google as part of the government. Well, the, and so it, you have to realize every time you're Googling anything, you are just straight up that, punching that into a government. I use database. a different. I, I use a different search engine. Yeah. So here's the thing you have to think of. So the government could crush any of these giant tech companies. So look at what it did to Facebook with it, what it's able to do with its marketing. Look at what it's doing with Apple now. Since I think it's since Apple said they won't take X off the App Store, so now they launched an investigation into Apple being in a monopoly. They've been a monopoly technically from the technical term for over ten years now by owning like over fifty percent of the cell phone market in America. But why now do they suddenly launch an investigation into them? Yeah. Why is right. that? Yeah. Yeah, I think because they're not taking X off the uh, App Store. Oh, that's but, crazy. You know, so they could crush Google in an instant just by changing a quick law, like saying, oh, you can't do um, search recommendations, you can't run ads on certain or, or websites. To break up, that's one of the uh, monopoly lawsuits that's currently going on to break up YouTube and Google. It's also, this is the central question in Vi- Biden versus Missouri as to when mm-hmm. the government coercion becomes uh, turning these private enterprises into government actors. Wow. So we'll see We'll see how the, the finding in that is going to be massively impactful. Well, okay. I'll see you guys all in the gulag. Yeah, <laughs> see you in the gulag. Together. All right, well, well, I found it's very easy. Just live, live t- totally transparently. Like I, you know, I, I never had anonymous users on YouTube, and it, uh, there's no point doing it because everybody can see at some point what you're doing. I'm, I'll, I'm a sinner. <laughs> I YouTube big booty shaking like I don't know, whatever. All right, guys, mo- moving, <laughs> moving on to our next story. Uh, David, uh, can- speaking of Canada, uh, you have something that's insane about Canada's assisted suicide. What the hell is going? Canada on? is the progressive leader of the world, even when it comes to killing its own citizens. Um, we, I, we've, I don't know if we've talked about it before, but Canada's like the leading country in the world for euthanasia right now. You said, Yeah, you, you told me. We've talked about this before. So and wonderful. it's in, do, do you all remember when Blackface Hitler was trending on Twitter? Yes. yes. It was, no. it was one, of, one of the... It was Trudeau, Justin Trudeau. Trudeau, it was, Trudeau was trending as Blackface Hitler because of the blackface <laughs> images that came out. Ow. And he tends to act like Hitler. And if anyone thinks I'm being hyperbolic, if we could just bring up the Forbes article... Uh, where they also Sorry, made the comparison. Because oh, I don't know, people, people get very sensitive. Oh, black, black there, there you go. Wait, Rob, show that. <laughs> I want people to see that. Hey, guys, look at Rob's phone. <laughs> I'm going to make that okay. my wall. That's Blackface Hitler. <laughs> that's what they call him. That's that's Free. the leader of, of Canada. Go ahead, no, uh, Dave. So, like, you know, people get sensitive when you start drawing comparisons between, is, this isn't Nazi Germany. You know, there were lessons that were learned. When you said never again, it means never again because things don't happen in the exact way, shape, or form. But they tend to rhyme, to quote Mark Twain. And so the, the Canada's euthanasia law, Laws. Uh, yeah, can you put that? Uh, what, what, what is that? Okay. Uh, laws carry upsetting Nazi era echoes, warns experts. Forbes wrote that? Forbes. Wow. Now, I, would, I just like to say, I was saying it before Forbes. When you, I, I, and I'll should preface this like, euthanasia is, is there, there are circumstances under which it's totally warranted, totally understandable, and everyone should support it. To make someone who's suffering from terminal cancer go through nothing but living hell for whatever's left of their life is one thing. In 2016, the Canadian Supreme Court ruled that denying the right to die with dignity to people was uh, unconstitutional, and it was, it was allowed. Liberal government comes in, makes a law that allows it for terminally ill, mentally ill, which they then, they, in the debate, they say, like, yeah, well, we don't want to deny the right of the mentally ill to kill themselves either, so let's, in, let's put that in the law, but give it a, you know, suspend it. We'll stay it for a bit until it was, um, it's been extended a couple times. Bottom line, it's been extended now, the, the stay on it. So you, mentally ill cannot euthanize themselves okay. for mental illness alone in Canada <laughs> until 2027 when this expires. <laughs> but the bottom line, they've been expanding it to not terminally ill, situations where death is not reasonably foreseeable. Uh, they want to expand it to minors. They want to expand it to minors who cannot consent. And if you can show the graph of the growth of you, the... the uh, exponential Whoa. surge of euthanasia in Canada. Holy 2016, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 5,000. And then look at it, 13,000 in 2022. If you believe that number, and I don't because I don't believe they're counting of everybody in not. it. Why would you believe that? The, Understand, by the way, 13,000 people is 4.1% of all death in Canada is Whoa. government assisted. In Quebec at one point, it was the third leading cause of death. So that's the that's leading up to this. Canada's so progressive it wants to let everybody just choose to end their lives. There were stories of the Canadian government offering maids, they call it maids, they don't call it uh, mercy killings like the Nazis did. Yeah. They call it maids, medical assistance in dying. 
veterans would call up Veterans Affairs with PTSD. Oh, my And they would goodness. offer them death. And then they say, oh, that was a one-off, yada, yada. It's not a one-off because you want to expand this to mental illness, which includes PTSD. <laughs> there was a woman who had what they call multiple chemical sensitivity. She couldn't get a proper housing accommodation, which would have no smoke, no chemicals. She elected for and received death. Oh my there was God. a woman who they featured in that ad from Simon's Clothing. And it was called Beauty and Everything. This 27-year-old woman who chose to die with dignity because she had a, a, an illness, not terminal, like hardening of the arteries. It's painful. They put her to death. It came out after she died that she didn't want to die. She put up posts as, I feel like I, I, I have no choices. The government's not providing for me. Holy crap. I interviewed a woman, Kayla Pollock, who was um, permanently debilitated with what's called transverse myelitis from a certain procedure, which we all know all too well now. Uh, permanently paralyzed, at first told it was in her head, and then after the government comes in and says, you know, have you thought about killing yourself? You've been paralyzed as a result of a, you know, basically what was mandated by the government, coerced by the government. We're no longer going to take care of you. It's going to be cheaper to kill you. Have you thought about killing yourself? Oh, my God. So I this story, it, it sounds like she a didn't. comedy. She didn't. She okay. didn't. And, she and did. we've, raised, we've raised her a lot of money. It's Kayla Pollock. Um, it, this, I interviewed her. The story is tragic. This story that I just read yesterday was posted by Post Millennial of um, a woman who suffers from autism who got authorization to kill herself. And her father petitioned the court to issue an emergency injunction to, to, to injunct her not to take her own life via the doctor. Autism. She has autism. And I thought in the article, like, okay, well, it's not a proven fact. You know, the father says she's got autism. In the, I read the judgment. She was, it was accepted as judicial fact she had autism with cognitive impairments. She was denied euthanasia on her first two attempts. One doctor said yes, another doctor said no. She goes, finds another panel. One says yes, one says no. She does it a third time. Third time's a charm. Both say yes. Oh. The father gets an injunction. The judge yesterday lifted the injunction, but he stayed the lift of his injunction, so she still can't do it for 30 days. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's. It's Nazi era level stuff. You, I agree. You, 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 you euthanize the mentally ill. Euthanize people with handicaps. Uh, it's not a. It's it's gone from the intended purpose of people who are on death's door and nothing but suffering, people with ALS who are going to be incapacitated to the point where they won't be able to do it later on, uh, to this progressive level like hey, mentally ill, you're depressed. You have the suicide hotline in Canada, and I, I make the sick. Uh, the, the cynical joke. I mean, is it to help people or is it to get a list? Yeah. Like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of killing myself. Well, uh, don't do it. Number. But if you're mentally ill, do it. I mean, call this number. Call oh this number. God. So that, that's the latest going on in Canada. It's shocking. Blackface Hitler has already trended. I don't know what needs to trend for this to get the eye of the world. But Canada's the a leading a leading state in state sanctioned murder. And if that if concerned. that doesn't go to Brandon's point, where the, they're they're not even hiding, it's overpop. They're trying to depopulate. As much as they can. He's a globalist, freaking uh, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. And what more of a... Bro, if you have a mental disorder, how can you mentally decide to stay alive or kill yourself? Those it, people are... They're all kids, you said about the youth. What are they trying to do with the youth? They're trying to... They're trying to expand it to, to minors. Oh my, minors depressed. who are eligible. From, from being on TikTok. The, the justification... And minors who can't consent, so you get the consent of their parents. When they made the joke about post-birth abortions, I mean, you've literally entered the realm where Babylon B has become reality. Oh, my... Well, I think, I think when you basically expand all law to be about choice where it's like it's it's like law it's the end result the logical conclusion of liberalism because liberalism is all about your own personal choice and your own personal feelings matter more than universal understandings of good so if you feel like you're so depressed that you want to commit suicide you should be given the choice you should be given the freedom to mm. so it's it's the state doesn't have the right or parents don't have the right to intervene and say no you should not kill yourself because who's to say whether killing yourself isn't the right option yeah. this is such a twisting of morality but it is their version of morality, which is you have the absolute right to do anything you want. Well, to do. it's it's the end result of not valuing life and not thinking that life is something beautiful that needs to be protected, except in the most circum you know extreme circumstances. But it, you know, life is not to be protected, uh, and it becomes cheaper for the government to end somebody's life than to provide them treatment. The system can't handle it now, and so there was an article in the CBC, the Canada Broadcasting Corporation, the state-run media. That said, no, you know, th this, it won't cost us any more money. It might actually save us money. No shit, Sherlock. That's part of the incentive for the government now to say it's cheaper to kill than to treat. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in socialized medicine. That's what happens when you no longer value life. And it's, it's basically the downfall of any morality in society. And bro, if you think about it, like, 
Is Canada just that bored? They got nothing. They got nothing else going on. Maybe they need to go to war. Just do something to get your mind off of some shit like that. What are they doing up there? Also, David, did you see that bill a couple weeks ago that tried to get passed in the House by the liberals about giving life sentences for hate speech? Oh no, that, that that was that was the um uh, the online, online safety, the online, that was online exactly safety, the same which thing, is yeah. absolutely same ridiculous. Thing. So it, it's it's it it's only intended. It's, I mean, it's I say not. I don't go with the population control because what they're trying to do in the meantime is say, oh, the, co the population of Canada isn't growing, so we need to import yeah. double the population import, by 2100. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's politics. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's for political gain, obviously, uh, but it's fundamentally immoral. And I'm, I'm glad at least mainstream legacy media, Forbes, is drawing the connection because the Nazis did it. They called it mercy killings, and they started yeah. with the handicapped. Yeah. They started with the, the, the impaired. Only the impaired. Could, the, yeah. yeah. And, and by the way, could, you know, to get a little Alex Jonesy. They're also passing laws in provinces, which is removing consent uh, for organ donation. Mm. Weird. And so now you say, like, okay, well, go kill yourself, and we'll harvest your organs we'll afterwards. Your organs. Well, it's a triple saving. Oh, we don't have to treat you. We can kill you, and we can harvest your organs after. Dude, Progress. Win, Get win. Oh, my don't God, know. dude. I had no idea. It's wild. I'm never going to Canada again. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, moving on. Brandon, I might, I'm might. i going to let you talk about it. Brandon's going to talk about uh, the two-slit light theory. Do we live in a simulation? Talk to me. Yeah, so this is something that I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. I'm, I've looked into it for a long time, and uh, I thought with all the crazy stuff going on in the world that um, you know this really applies to everything because it could explain, explain a lot of things like the deep coding and um, things that the mysteries of the universe. So uh, I want to start with a phenomenon where literally the observer, whether or not you're observing something or not observing something, fundamentally changes what happens. Meaning what? That, like, say you're looking at what's going on behind you. Something entirely different is going on if you're not looking at what's going on behind oh, so you. Oh, so is it one of those, like, if a tree falls in the middle of the forest, yeah. does it make a noise or does it not? Did it fall or yeah, or, correct. Or that, so that angle? Correct. So we're going to play this video, and then I'm going to give a list of um, examples that scientists have cited that are weird things that would indicate we might live in Living simulation to some okay. degree. All right. So let's run the video. Okay. I love we're playing a game. So stumped that they decided to observe which slit the particle went through. <laughs> okay, oh, and that's slit. when things get really. Brandon, you're weird. a pervert. All right. So when wait. scientists <laughs> used a measuring device to observe the slit that each photon passed Look through, oh, the yeah, interference yeah. pattern disappeared, <laughs> and the photons started behaving like particles. Instead of the spectrum of light and dark bands, we see two bright bands, indicating that the photons chose one slit or the other. So light can display characteristics of both particles and waves, known as wave-particle duality. It appears that light decides to behave as a wave when it's not being watched, and acts like a particle when it is being measured. The mere act of observing which slit it went through changed the behavior of the photons, almost as if they were aware they were being watched. Light? It's kind of like how in a video game, the environment and objects only load when the player focuses on or interacts with them. The entire world isn't rendered all at once, allowing the game to save processing power and optimize resources. Likewise, light seems to behave like waves, but when we observe it, it's as if we're loading its properties, causing it to change and act like particles. So what's real? So makes sense. Not, yeah, wait a minute. So the light w saw that the camera was watching it, is that what that's representing, or is that a yeah, like yeah, no, exactly. So like, it did something fundamentally different when it was being observed by either a camera or by a person. What the hell is like? So it's like it's like it has its own, like mind. It does its own thing. This is just light going through a no, a no, like anything. So like the video game example is a good example. So you know, like when you're playing a video game, like it's not like the entire world is uploaded, like in the video it's game. Just it's just what's like, in front of you and what what you choose right. to open the door or wherever you go. So it's saying like the properties of the world act like that. Oh, shit. Well, not to get too religious or biblical, but it, one would have to accept the world as something of a simulation if you believe in a god that might have created this universe. I mean, we might just be using yeah. terms a little differently. The, the light behaving differently if it's being observed seems like the uh, it might be doing both at the same time, and when you observe it, you're only observing one of the two things that it's doing. I'm going to have to go watch that a lot longer and ask one of my brothers who might be able to explain Oh, what's your it. brother do? Uh, he's a smart guy. Just one. Oh, he's smart. He just <laughs> yeah. read books. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm right there with you, though. So I, like people jump to the conclusion that like, oh, if you believe in simulation theory, like then you don't believe in the God or creator. No, I don't think that's true. I just think that the world shows a lot of signs that it might be designed like similar to how we're designing like early phase computers because it follows a lot of the same mathematics and code. So some other examples are 
the fact that um, so in 2017, a group of researchers at the University, University of Washington found that um, if you put malicious computer code into physical, you could put malicious computer code into physical strands of DNA. So their aim was to show that computers working in gene sequencing were vulnerable to attack, but they also inadvertently revealed that what we perceive to be biological reality was in fact computer code. So our biological makeup is like fairly similar to what computer code consists of. Oh, really? Yeah. So like our, our biology is like pretty similar to like how computers are made. Um, another thing, the universe uh, is like encoded the way that computers are too. So theoretical physicist James Gates claims that he has identified what appears to be actual computer code embedded into the equations of string theory that describes the fundamental particles of our universe. He said he found error, error correcting codes that are what make that are like how browsers work within the universe. So like how birds fly, how fish swim together, and like the way that the planets move around. Same coding as uh, like that's within computers. And then the Goldilocks zone. So the odds of us like living in an area that is perfect for like, as far as temperature and um, environment. Like think about how like how much we're threading the needle with um, the sweet spot of being like in a place that's not too hot, not too cold. And like out of the entire universe, this is the only habitable place because you know there, we haven't detected life anywhere else within like the vast universe. So you know it's almost like it's constructed perfectly for us to survive on. Oh my god! So I mean, so what happens with religion when it comes to that? Are people like? I mean, people simulation? people jump to that conclusion that it's like an anti-religion thing, but I don't think it's an anti-religion thing. I say like. Like uh, why would God, like God would obviously des design a place that's habitable for us? So well, I think it, it, it's it's the I mean to just argue the opposite. It's it's not just incompatible. It's almost necessary. Like the intelligent design sound simulation is might just be another description for right. intelligent design. Right. But you you blow your mind by the way. I read the black holes in the universe by uh, I forget who wrote it. Um, imagine that it's not only one universe, but we live in a multiverse and universes just come in out of existence. And at any given point in time, there's an infinite number of universes that are coming, expanding, oh popping. God. And we are just not one planet in a galaxy in one entire universe. Multiverse theory. It's oh beautiful. My God. That, dude, that's, that's by the way, if insane. I smoked, if I was smoking weed, my, I, I would go left right now. I don't now. think there's <laughs> enough <laughs> to, to yeah. make me understand yeah, well, this. We'll break, to tie right? this all together yeah. real quick. So um, uh, the end, you ever hear the concept of NPCs, like people who... You know, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's like the concept of NPCs and uh, people like that don't really like, think for themselves or whatnot. Like the, I guess we use the term sheep a lot. So it turns out the studies show 50% of people don't have inner inner monologue, meaning that uh, they don't really like aren't able to like process thoughts in the way that like the other half people do. So we wonder how is it that some people are are so easily manipulated, like um, people who get brainwashed by the news and whatnot. What and, do you think, uh, uh, Rob? Like, what do you think? You think like like you think it's NPCs? You, you think, think like it's real? Do you think it's fake? I am so confused. Like, so NPCs, you don't know? So you? So, I have an inner monologue. It seems very odd to me that fifty percent of people walk around here with nothing going on in their brain. Yeah, no, but that, oh my god! But think about that. Like, I constantly, I, I'm sometimes too much in my own head. Hundred percent. Right. So there's yeah. fifty percent of people walking around that may not have that inner. Like, let's studies all, say that. Yeah. Do you? I, okay, I, I, but I there's actually, five of us here. Do you have an inner I, monologue? I don't believe it, by the way. I saw I the woman don't. explaining what it feels like. I don't believe it. I think it might be another one of these TikTok-ish trends that <laughs> yeah. are convincing no, I, people I that have mental illnesses. Know. Like, I don't hear my own voice when I... Think. I don't... I, I I know... It's, well, it's I'm impossible. Swear. No, I swear. <laughs> Something's I just, telling like, me yes about, or no, I right or wrong. Pictures. Like, well, I just pictures. Something, yeah. yeah, something goes, don't do that. Like, I don't hear it, but you know what's ultimately right or wrong, and that's what they say. It's God. But, right, guys, I got to move on to our last story. Um, Shane. Yes. We got a couple minutes. Threats against Donald J. Trump, talk yes. to me. So uh, we have James Carville, who is uh, most famous for saying it's the economy, stupid, okay. in the 90s. He was uh, one of Bill Clinton's top campaign advisors, and he's been a top Democrat strategist ever since then. He is, you know, very respected in the Democratic Party. And on Thursday, he uh, said on CNN that Biden needs other people to do his wet work for him, which is a term for assassination. Oh, snap. So uh, let's play this clip. Yeah, go ahead. Shut up. President Biden is not the best attack politician I've ever seen in my life, and I'll leave it at that. But there are a lot of people that, to do what I call, quote, the wet work, unquote. And <laughs> he laughs. He, I, I, it I sounds like a mob hit. Stay yeah, no shit. Yeah, well, it's kind of, but it's a paid TV and stuff like that. But yes, a CIA term. Uh -huh. CIA term, he says. Take a yeah. guy out. But he doesn't need to do the wet work. People like me and other groups in the party need to do that. He He's not very good at it. 
I don't think people want to hear from that. And then he can, he can, you know, cruise along here at a, at a better altitude. But it, this has got to be done, and they got a precious advantage right now in it. Right, the so you work. could, okay, maybe say, you know, this is just a joke. It's like Trump saying bloodbath. He doesn't mean it literally, although, however, Trump was referring to something totally different with yeah, that. Car he's, he's referring to attacking Trump. Yeah. But that would be the case if it wasn't for a worrying trend among the media class where they're increasingly talking about Trump becoming a dictator. What's this? So this? This was a few months ago. The Atlantic's entire editorial board each wrote an essay about different ways Trump will become a dictator in 2024 hmm. if he gets elected. Uh, the top article was from David Frum, who was a Republican, now turned Democrat, never Trumper, pro-Iraq war, Bush-era conservative. He wrote about how Trump is going to usher in an autocracy. Oh, God. And do you know what neoconservatives do to autocrats? They invade their countries and overthrow them. Wow. So you have a, a guy who was literally an architect of the Iraq War, which was designed to overthrow a sovereign country because they didn't agree with their that leader, who was authoritarian Saddam Hussein. Now, the same person who designed that war is saying Trump will become a Saddam Hussein. So you follow the logic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next book, Liz Cheney, daughter of... Dick Cheney, who did, did the same thing. Ever. War same criminal. Thing. He's still alive, right? In this, yeah, he's still alive. Barely. In this book, she says that uh, it's called A Memoir and a Warning. Jeez. Memoir and a Warning. So you have her talking about her time in Congress. Then she shifts gears and starts talking about how Trump is going to become a dictator and he's going to remove uh, measures of democracy. He's going to start riots. He's going to start... Everything, know, that, the left, everything that the left has done and wants do. to do. And yeah. The worst of them all. This was an op-ed in the Washington Post. Um, What's this one? So, get this. This is by a guy named Robert Kagan. He writes, A Trump dictatorship is increasingly inevitable. We should stop pretending. This guy is a neocon intellectual, same camp as the David Frum and the Liz Cheney's of the world. His wife is Victoria Nuland, oh, who damn. was huh. Biden's deputy, uh, deputy secretary of state until she mysteriously resigned a couple of weeks ago. And by the way, these people don't just resign. They have other things lined of up. Of course. So I don't know what's going on with her. But so this guy writes in this article, he says, so the picture is Julius Caesar's face being photoshopped into Trump's face. Hmm. Guess what happened to Caesar? He got Stabbed assassinated. Him. Oh, my God. It says uh, Trump. He says, indicting Trump for trying to overthrow the government will prove akin to indicting Caesar for crossing the Rubicon and just as effective. Like Caesar, Trump wields a clout that transcends the laws and institutions of government based on the unswerving personal loyalty of his army of followers. You follow that logic. What he's saying is indicting Trump will work. Doing lawfare against Trump won't work. The only thing that will work is what worked against Julius Caesar, which was assassinating him to save the republic. Wow. So I think it's pretty much guaranteed that they're going to try this. And you saw the guy uh, pretending to be a security guard for your RFK. He got stopped. And in 2016, someone tried to rush the stage when Trump was on stage and he was stopped. Who's sending those people? And are they going to try it again? I think it's. Wow. Do you all remember the wet works scandal when it came to the death of Scalia? Mm -hmm. it, that was revealed in the Podesta emails. I, I want to make sure I got it. But there was an email in respect of um, Scalia that said, thanks, didn't think wet works meant pool parties at the vineyard. And in response to that, it was Podesta replying, uh, I am. I'm in. It all sounds like a bad night. We all need to buckle up and double down. Uh, so the, I, I had heard the wet works mm. in respect of the uh, WikiLeaks, Podesta, and Scalia. That's one of the conspiracy theories on the internet. But I'm more inclined to believe conspiracy <laughs> theories now than not. Uh, there's no question. They accuse others of using dog whistles all the time. And to borrow from another Hitlerian um, disciple, Goebbels, accuse your adversaries of doing what you're doing so as to create confusion. They accuse you of using dog whistles because they use dog whistles all the time. Um, but let's not get it twisted. If they had a chance, if they had a chance, and they'd get away with it. Trump would have been, bro, if this, what, what year was JFK assassinated? 63. 63. If this was then, Trump would have been taken out a long time. Let's stop, like, lying to each other. To, from 2016, the cheating happened. From the 2020, to all the fake impeachments, to 2000, to, to the, to the mail-in voting, to the, um, uh, Wuhan random disease came out of nowhere from the FBI being at Twitter. It's cheating, 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 cheating. To, right now, with the whole Letitia James, it's out in the open. They're not trying to hide it, and they're running out of options. Guys. They're running out of options, and if they could, they would.
it's they tried political assassination with the two impeachments. They tried economic assassination through these these court rulings. Yep. They're going with legislative and judicial assassination or not legislative judicial assassination. Yep. There's no question. And then they try to make it look like Trump is the one threatening violence it's to not. trigger people into an irrational, violent response to prevent a bloodbath when he was obviously only talking yep. about economics. And that's their goal. It's I think I think the goal and I have to wrap up, guys. I have to by the way, I'm doing a Here's Morgan <laughs> podcast. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I think they're pushing and they're doing all this, guys, to get us to the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people go nuts and have a civil war, just like the movie that's coming out. It's predictive programming, just like that weird the ship, the the thing that hit the Baltimore Saint, the Francis Key Bridge. Seems like the beginning of the world, the movie Leave the World Behind that the Obamas made. But all right, guys. That being said, an amazing show, Dave. Brandon, Shane, Rob, I love you guys to death. Kelly, everybody that's behind the cameras, everybody in the back, Jeremy, uh, Alejandro, Jorge, who else is back there? Umberto, little unusual better. And guys, again, thank you so much for, for following us. For uh, If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe right now. Hit the like, where is it? Right there. Smash that. I hate when they say that. Smash the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get on us on Manect, I'm going to have Dave get on there as well. If you want advice on anything. That being said, guys, have an amazing day. God bless you guys, and we'll see you guys on Friday. Peace and love.